Hello coders, I welcome you all. In this video, we are going to discuss very well known machine learning project credit card fraud detection using machine learning. As you know, it is very important that credit card companies are able to recognize fraudulent credit card transactions so that customers are not charged for items that they didn't purchase. The main aim of this project is to detect fraudulent transactions with help of credit card details. So what is credit card fraud? Credit card fraud refers to scammer. Someone is using your credit card number and pin or your stolen credit card for financial transactions from your account and without your knowledge. So for that we are going to work on real world data set available on Kaggle. You can download this data set from Kaggle or from my GitHub account. Link is given in the description of this video. So let's get started. As you can see here currently I am on Kaggle.com. So as I said you can download this data set from Kaggle or from my GitHub account. Link is given in the description of this video. To download this data set from Kaggle just click on this download button. So as you can see here information about data set as you can see here the data set contains transactions made by credit cards in September 2013 by European card holders. This data set presents transactions that occurred in two days where we have 492 frauds out of around 284,000 transactions. So we can say that the data set is highly unbalanced and please remember it contains only numerical input variables which are the result of a PCA transformation as you can see here they have mentioned unfortunately due to confidentiality issues we cannot provide the original features and more background information about the data this data set contains features v1 v2 up to v28 and these features are the principal components obtained with PCA the only features which have not been transformed with PCA are time and amount as you can see over here feature class is the response also called as a target or dependent variable available in this data set and it takes value 1 in case of fraud and 0 otherwise. So let's get started. Let's jump to Jupyter Notebook. So as you can see here to explain you this project here I have mentioned some questions that you can see over here. So now let's solve them one by one. So let me first import pandas as pd. Let me execute this cell. As you can see here, now our pandas library is successfully imported. So now let's load our data set as pandas data frame. So for that, let me write pd dot read underscore csv because our data set is available in dot csv file format with name credit card dot csv. Let me assign it to one variable data is equal to this statement. Let me execute this set. As you can see here, now our data set is successfully imported as pandas data frame. So now let's solve our questions one by one. So now question number one. In this question we have to display top five rows of this data set. So for that let me write data and we have to use head method of pandas data frame. Let me execute this cell. As you can see here by default this head method is displaying top five rows of the data set that you can see over here. As you know our data set contains many columns. So that's why here it is showing dot dot dot. If you want to check each and every columns then we have to set one pandas option. Let me show you this. So for that we have to write pd dot options dot display dot max underscore columns and let me set it to none. Let me execute this cell and let me execute this cell once again. As you can see here now we can see each and every columns that you can see over here. So we are having this many columns time then v1 to v28 that you can see over here and amount column and this is our target also called as a response or dependent variable class that you can see over here. So this way we can display top 5 rows of the data set using head method of pandas data frame that you can see over here. So now our next question in this question we have to check last 5 rows of the data set that we can do with tail method of pandas data frame. As you can see here by default tail method is displaying last five rows of our data set that you can see over here. By that we can able to know total how many rows are available in our data set that you can see over here. So this way we can check last five rows of the data set using tail method of pandas data frame that you can see over here. So now our next question. In this question we have to find shape of our data set means number of rows and number of columns available in our data set. So for that we have to write data and we have to use save attribute of pandas data frame. 
as you can see here set is not a method it is an attribute of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see over here output is python tuple this is at index 0 and this is at index 1 let me print this in proper format number of rows data dot shape index 0 print number of columns data dot shape index 1 let me execute this cell as you can see over here in our data set we are having this many rows in our data set we are having this many columns so this way we can find shape of our data set means number of rows and number of columns available in our data set that you can see over here now our next question in this question we have to get information about our data set like total number of rows total number of columns data types of each column and memory requirement that we can do with just one method info method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here total we are having this many entries means this many rows with this indexes and total we are having this many columns that you can see over here as you can see here column names so as you can see here non null count these many non null values are available in this particular column this many non null values are available in this particular column likewise as you can see here data type data type of each and every columns that you can see over here as you can see here data types colon means in our data set 30 columns with floating point data type in our data set one column with integer data type that you can see over here and memory usage for our data set that you can see over here so this way we can get information about our data set like total number of rows total number of columns data types of each column and memory requirement using info method of pandas data frame that you can see over here so now our next question so in this question we have to check null values in the data set so for that let me write data and we have to use is null method of pandas data frame let me execute this cell as you can see here output is pandas data frame with boolean values so now let's perform sum of true values let me execute this cell as you can see here output is 0 0 and 0 means we do not have any null value in our data set that you can see over here so this way we can check null values in the data set that you can see over here so now next let me display top five rows of our data set as you can see here in our data set all the values are in the same range that you can see over here except this amount column that you can see over here so we are going to use standard scalar for feature scaling only for this amount column so for that let me import from sklearn dot preprocessing let me import standard scalar let me execute this cell as you can see here now our standard scalar is successfully imported now let me create instance of this standard scalar and let me use sc dot feet underscore transform and let me pass our amount column this one let me copy this column name and let me paste it over here and to modify our existing data frame let me assign back let me execute this cell as you can see here value error let me check it is expecting save in this one and minus one because our data has a single feature so we can solve this error in many ways but let me convert this column into pandas data frame let me execute this cell let me check as you can see here we have successfully applied feature scaling on this amount column that you can see over here so this way we can use standard scalar for feature scaling that you can see over here so as you can see here this time column which can be an external deciding factor but in our modeling process we can drop it so now let's drop this time column so for that let me write data dot drop and this time column and let me set axis to one and to modify our existing data frame let me assign back let me execute this cell as you can see here now time column is dropped that you can see over here now let me check shape of our data set as you can see here in our data set we are having this many transactions before removing any duplicate transaction so now let me check for duplicate values so for that we have to write data dot duplicated method of pandas data frame dot any let me execute this cell as you can see here output is true 
means our data set contains some duplicated values. So now let's drop duplicated values. So for that we have to write data dot we have to use drop underscore duplicates method of pandas data frame to modify our existing data frame. Let me assign back. Let me execute this cell. Let me check shape of our data set after removing duplicate values. As you can see here transactions before removing any duplicate value. Let me copy this and let me paste it over here and these many transactions after removing duplicated values. Let me execute this cell. So as you can see here we were having around 9000 duplicate transactions that we have removed successfully. So now as you can see here we have properly scaled our data with no duplicate no missing values. So let's get started. So now our next question not handling imbalanced data set. So let me check distribution of our target variable class. Let me use value counts method of pandas data frame as you can see over here. It is always better practice to visualize it. So for that let me import C1 as SNS. Let me execute this set as you can see here. Now our C1 library is successfully imported and let me use count plot of C1 and let me pass our target variable. Let me execute this set as you can see here our data set is highly imbalanced that you can see over here. So what is imbalanced data set imbalanced data set refers to those types of data sets where the target class has an uneven distribution of observations that you can see over here uneven distribution of observations in our data set that you can see over here one class label has very high number of observations that you can see over here and other class has a very low number of observations that you can see over here. So here one which is called as a minority class and zero which is our majority class. So let me show you what happened if we do not handle imbalanced data set then after we will discuss how to handle imbalanced data set. So now our next question in this question we are going to store our feature matrix in X means our independent variables in X and our response also called as a target variable or dependent variable in vector y. So for that let me write x is equal to data dot drop. So let's drop our dependent variable class and let me set x is equal to 1 and let me assign our target variable also called as a response or dependent variable in vector y. Let me execute this set. As you can see here this x contains our independent variables and this y contains our dependent or target variable class. So this way we can store feature matrix in X and response or target or dependent variable in vector Y that you can see over here. So now our next question. In this question we are going to split our data set into the training set and the testing set to evaluate the performance of our machine learning models. So for that let me import from sklearn dot model underscore selection. We have to import train underscore test underscore split and let me write train underscore test underscore split and here we have to pass our independent variables and our dependent variable and let me set test size to 0 0.20 here we are going to keep aside 20 percent data for testing purpose let me set random underscore stay to 42 and let me assign this to x underscore train x underscore test y underscore train and y underscore test is equal to this statement. So as you can see here two sets one for training and one for testing. So we are going to train our model on x train and y train. We will perform predictions using x test and we will compare predicted results with y test which contains our actual values. So this way we can use train test split to evaluate the performance of our machine learning models that you can see over here. So we will handle imbalanced data set shortly. So we are going to use under sampling as well as over sampling. But first let me show you what happened if we do not handle imbalanced data set. So first we are going to use logistic regression as you know in our data set target variable is having categorical values 0 and 1. So this is binary classification problem. So that's why we are going to use different classification algorithms. So let's start with logistic regression. So for that let me import from sklearn dot linear underscore model and let me import 
logistic regression and let me create instance of this logistic regression now let's train our model logistic regression on our training set x train and y train let me execute this set as you can see here name error name x underscore train is not defined because i forget to execute this cell so we have to execute this cell let me execute this cell and let me execute this cell once again as you can see here now our machine learning model logistic regression is successfully trained on our training set so now let's perform prediction so for that we have to use predict method using x test and let me assign it to one variable pred1 is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let me check accuracy score so for that we have to import from sklearn dot matrix we have to import accuracy underscore score let me execute this cell as you can see here accuracy underscore score module is successfully imported so now let's use this let me press save tab over here as you can see in this accuracy underscore score we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model as you know our actual values are available inside y underscore test and predicted values by our model inside y underscore pred one let me execute this set as you can see here logistic regression is 99 percent accurate on our data set now let's check precision recall and f1 score so for that we have to import from sklearn dot matrix we have to import precision underscore score recall underscore score and f1 underscore score let me execute this set now let me check precision score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values in our case actual values are available inside y underscore test and predicted values by our model logistic regression in y underscore pred one let me execute this set now let me check recall score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model logistic regression let me check f1 score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see here compared to accuracy precision recall and f1 scores are very low this is due to our imbalanced data set and this is true for each and every models so that we have to handle imbalanced data set please remember it is very very dangerous to use only accuracy as a metric on imbalanced data set we have to check precision recall and f1 score as well if our data set is imbalanced so now let's handle this imbalanced data set to handle imbalanced data set we can use two techniques under sampling and over sampling first we are going to use under sampling then i will show you over sampling so now let's start with under sampling so in under sampling we are randomly delete rows from majority class to match them with the minority class which is called as under sampling so let me show you how to perform under sampling so now let's first store normal transaction in one variable and fraudulent transactions in another variable so for that let me write data and data when class is equal to zero our normal transactions let me store into one variable normal and let's store fraudulent transactions into one variable fraud is equal to this statement let me execute this cell let me check normal dot shape as you can see over here total we are having this many normal transactions and fraud dot shape total we are having this many fraudulent transactions so let me use normal dot sample method of pandas data frame and let's select 473 random samples from normal transactions to match this with fraudulent transactions and let me assign it to one variable normal underscore sample is equal to this statement please remember this sample method will select 473 samples randomly from this normal transactions let me execute this set let me check as you can see over here now we are having 473 normal transactions and 473 fraudulent transactions so this way we can perform under sampling so as i say in under sampling we can randomly delete rows from the majority class to match them with minority class that you can see over here which is called as under sampling so now let's concat our normal samples and fraudulent samples this one and let me assign it to one variable new underscore 
data is equal to this statement. Let me execute this cell now. Let me check our target variable distribution class. So for that, let me use value counts method of pandas data frame. Now, as you can see here, we are having same number of samples for fraudulent and normal transactions that you can see over here. Now, let me check our newly created data frame after under sampling. As you can see over here, random indexes. So now let's set these indexes. So for that, here let me set ignore underscore index to true. Let me execute this cell, this one, and this one as well. As you can see over here. So this way we can set our indexes. Now again, we have to store. Feature matrix in X and response also called as a target variable in vector Y for this newly created data frame after under sampling to save our recording time. Let me copy this and let me paste it over here. So in place of this, we have to write new underscore data, which is our newly created data frame after under sampling. Let me execute this cell. Now let's perform train test play to evaluate the performance of our machine learning model. After under sampling. So again to save our recording time. Let me copy this and let me paste it over here. So here X and Y and here is also X and Y. Let me execute this set. Now let's use our first machine learning algorithm logistic regression after under sampling. So after under sampling we have to use this X underscore train and Y underscore train which are already mentioned. So let me execute this cell once again. And let's perform prediction on X underscore test after under sampling this one. Let me execute this cell. Let me execute this cell. So let me keep this result as it is before under sampling. Let me create cell. Let me copy this and let me paste it over here. Let me execute this cell. As you can see over here, accuracy of our model after under sampling. Let me execute this cell. Let me keep this precision score as it is. Let me copy this and let me paste it over here. Let me execute this cell. As you can see over here, precision score is 100% after under sampling. That you can see over here. Previously it was 88%. Now let me check the recall score after under sampling. As you can see over here, our recall score is also increased from 60% to 92%. Let me check F1 score after under sampling. As you can see over here, our F1 score is also increased. Previously it was 71%. Now it is 95% that you can see over here. So as I say, please remember it is very very dangerous to use accuracy as a metric on imbalanced data set. We have to check precision recall and F1 score as well on imbalanced data set that you can see over here. So that's why we have to handle imbalance data set that you can see over here. So now our next question decision tree classifier. So let's use decision tree classifier after under sampling. So for that, let me import from sklearn dot tree. Let me import decision tree classifier. Let me create instance of this decision tree classifier. Now let's train decision tree classifier on our training set x train and y train after under sampling that you can see over here. Let me execute this cell as you can see here. Now our decision tree classifier is successfully trained on our training set. Now let's perform prediction using this decision tree classifier on our unseen samples. Let me assign it to one variable y underscore pred is equal to this statement. Let me execute this cell. As you can see here, we have already imported these modules accuracy underscore score, precision underscore score, recall underscore score, and effort underscore score. So here let me check accuracy score. So as you know here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model. So as you know actual values are available inside by underscore test and predicted values by our decision tree classifier available inside y underscore pred 2. Let me execute this cell as you can see here our decision tree classifier is 92% accurate on this data set. Let me check precision score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model decision tree classifier as you can see here precision score 93 percent let me check recall score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see here recall score is 92 percent let me check f1 score 
again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see over here f1 score is also 92 percent because we have already performed under sampling that you can see over here so this way we can use decision tree classifier now our next question let's use random forest classifier after under sampling so for that let me import from sklearn dot ensemble we have to import random forest classifier so now let's create instance of this random forest classifier now let's train our random forest classifier on our training set after under sampling let me execute this cell as you can see here now our random forest classifier is successfully trained on our training set after under sampling so now let's perform prediction on our unseen samples available inside by underscore test let me assign it to one variable y underscore pred 3 is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let me check accuracy score here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model random forest classifier as you can see here random forest classifier is 95 percent accurate on this data set let me check precision score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model random forest classifier as you can see here precision score is 100 percent let me check recall score actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see here recall score is 91 percent let me check f1 score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see here precision score is 95 percent as you know these scores are very high because we have performed under sampling that you can see over here so this way we can use random forest classifier so now let's visualize these results so for that let me create pandas data frame using python dictionary let me pass models as a key and lr for logistic regression decision tree and random forest and let me create data frame only for accuracy you can create this for precision recall and f1 score as well so let me write accuracy underscore score actual values and predicted values for logistic regression available inside by underscore pred one for percentage let me multiply it with 100 let me copy this statement and let me paste it over here and let me paste it over here as you know predicted values by decision tree available inside by underscore pred two for random forest predicted values are available inside y underscore pred 3 let me execute this cell let me assign it to one variable final underscore data is equal to this statement let me execute this cell once again let me check as you can see over here so now let's visualize this data frame so for that i am going to use c bonds bar plot as you know we have already imported c bond as sns and here let me pass final underscore data and our column name models this one on y-axis let me pass final underscore data and this accuracy column let me execute this cell as you can see over here from this bar plot we can see that logistic regression is the best model for this data set after under sampling that you can see over here so this way we can perform under sampling that you can see over here so now let's perform over sampling so the disadvantage of under sampling is that we lose a lot of valuable data so that's why we are going to use over sampling using smooth smooth stands for synthetic minority over sampling technique it is one of the most commonly used over sampling methods to solve this data imbalanced problem smooth aims to balance class distribution by randomly increasing minority class examples by replicating them please remember smooth synthesizes new minority instances between existing minority instances how it is doing this please remember smooth generates the virtual training records by linear interpolation for the minority class so this synthetic one or more of the k nearest neighbors for each example in the minority class please remember the advantage of smooth is that you are not generating duplicates but rather creating synthetic data points that are slightly different from the original data points so now 
let's use smooth for over sampling now here let me load our data set once again and let me perform feature scaling once again now let's drop time column also let's remove duplicated values as you can see here now our data set is as it is because we are going to use over sampling now let's store our feature matrix in x and response variable also called as a target variable in vector y let me copy these statements and let me paste it over here let me check shape of x and shape of y that you can see over here now let's use smooth so for that we have to import from imb learn dot over underscore sampling and we have to import smooth let me execute this cell as you can see here now smooth is successfully imported now let's use smooth dot feet underscore re sample let's pass here our independent variables and dependent variable available inside x and y and let me assign it to x underscore res and y underscore res is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let me check shape of our target variable as you can see over here almost double let me use value counts method as you can see over here now we are having same number of samples in normal and in fraudulent transactions that you can see over here so this way we can use smooth for over sampling that you can see over here so now let's perform train test split to save our recording time let me copy these statements and let me paste it over here in place of this we have to pass x underscore res and y underscore res after smooth that you can see over here let me execute this cell as you can see here our train test play is successfully completed so now let's use logistic regression after over sampling as you know we have already imported logistic regression so let me create instance of this logistic regression now let's train logistic regression after over sampling x train and y train on our training set let me execute this cell as you can see here now our logistic regression is successfully trained on our training set after over sampling so now let's perform prediction on our unseen samples and let me assign it to y underscore pred one let me execute this cell as you know we have already imported accuracy underscore score so let me pass here actual values and predicted values by our model logistic regression let me check as you can see here logistic regression is 94 percent accurate on this data set after over sampling let me check precision score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model logistic regression precision score is 97 percent let me check recall score actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see here recall score is 91 percent let me check f1 score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model as you can see here f1 score is 94 percent as you know we are getting higher values for precision recall and f1 score because we have used smooth now let's use decision tree classifier after over sampling so as you know we have already imported decision tree classifier so now let me create instance of decision tree classifier as dt you can use any now let's train our decision tree classifier after over sampling on our training set x train and y train let me execute this cell it will take some time because now our data set is become very large because of smooth over sampling so we have to wait as you can see here now our decision tree classifier is successfully trained on our training set after over sampling so now let's perform prediction on unseen samples and let me assign it to one variable pred2 is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let me check accuracy score actual values and predicted values by our model decision tree classifier let me execute this cell as you can see here decision tree classifier is 99 percent accurate on this data set after over sampling let me check precision score actual values and predicted values by our model 
decision tree classifier. As you can see here, precision score is also around 99%. Let me check recall score. Again, here we have to pass actual values and predicted values. Recall score is also 99%. This is due to over sampling. Let me check F1 score. Again, actual values and predicted values by our model. You can see here. F1 score is also 99%. So this way we can use decision tree classifier on our data set after over sampling. So now let's use random forest classifier after over sampling. As you know, we have already imported random forest classifier. So let me create instance of random forest classifier. Now let's train our random forest classifier on our training set after over sampling. Let me execute this cell. It will take some time as you know now our data set is become very large because of smooth oversampling as you can see here after taking so much time now our random forest classifier is successfully trained on our training set after over sampling now let's perform prediction on our unseen samples available inside x underscore test and let me assign it to one variable y underscore pred 3 is equal to this statement let me execute this cell now let's check accuracy score so here we have to pass our actual values and predicted values by our model random forest classifier let me execute this cell as you can see here random forest is 99 percent accurate on this data set after over sampling let me check precision score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model random forest classifier as you can see here precision score is also 99 percent let me check recall score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model random forest classifier let me execute this cell as you can see here recall score is 100 percent let me check f1 score again here we have to pass actual values and predicted values by our model random forest classifier let me execute this cell as you can see here f1 score is also 99 percent so this way we can use random forest classifier so now let's visualize this result so for that let me use already created data frame to save our recording time this one let me copy this and let me paste it over here let me execute this cell let me check as you can see over here so now let's visualize this so again let me use this statement to save our recording time let me copy and let me paste it over here let me execute this cell as you can see over here from this bar plot we can see that a random forest classifier is the best model for this data set after over sampling so now let's use this random forest classifier in our production so now our next question here we are going to save our best model random forest classifier as you know after over sampling our model training process is required too much time right so we are going to save our model so again and again training is not required and we can perform prediction using this save model so let me show you this but before that please remember we have used train test split just to evaluate the performance of our machine learning models but for production we have to train our best model on entire data set so here we are going to train our best model random forest classifier on entire data set after over sampling so for that let me create once again instance of our best model random forest classifier and now let's train our best model on entire data set after over sampling that you can see over here after smooth our independent variables are available inside x underscore res and our dependent variable class available inside y underscore res so we have to train our best model random forest classifier on these variables means on independent variables and dependent variables available inside x underscore res and y underscore res after smooth that you can see over here so now let's train our best model on entire data set x underscore res and y underscore res let me execute this cell as you know we are training our random forest classifier on entire data set which is very large right 
so it will take some time so we have to wait so i am going to pause this video as you can see here now our best model random forest classifier is trained on entire data set so now let's save our best model random forest classifier so again again training is not required and in future we can perform prediction using this save model so for that i am going to use joblib library let me import joblib let me execute this cell as you can see here now our joblib library is successfully imported so now let's save our model so for that we have to use dump method of this joblib library and here we have to pass instance of our best model random forest classifier as you can see here rf1 and here you can give any let me give credit underscore card underscore model you can give any other name let me execute this cell as you can see here now our model is successfully saved with this name so in the future we can perform prediction using this save model let me show you this so for that we have to use joblib dot load and here we have to pass this name let me copy and let me paste it over here let me assign it to one variable model is equal to this statement let me execute this set let me write model dot predict so for teaching learning purpose i am going to use one 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 but you can pass actual values for prediction as you know total we are having 29 columns means 29 features so here total we have to pass 29 values let me execute this cell as you can see here output is zero means this is a normal transaction let me assign it to one variable pred is equal to this statement so we can write if pred is equal to zero so we can write this is normal transaction else this is fraudulent transaction let me execute this cell as you can see over here with these values our transaction is normal transaction that you can see over here so this way we can perform prediction using our save model that you can see over here and this way we can save our model so as you can see here i have created gui for this project credit card fraud detection using machine learning that you can see over here exactly same way as we have created for our previous projects i am sure you must be knowing this right because we have created it from scratch that you can see over here so let me execute this cell as you can see here gui for this project credit card fraud detection using machine learning for teaching learning purpose here i am passing one but you can pass actual values let me press this predict button as you can see over here final prediction from our best model credit card fraud detection this transaction is normal transaction that you can see over here so this way we can perform prediction using our created gui hope you like this video please don't forget to subscribe this channel if you like this video smash that like button thank you very much for watching this video take care bye bye see you in the next video